Callbacks have become a very standard way of dealing with asynchronous data, but the web has come a long way in the last few years, and with the rise of promises, and with promises landing with native support in JavaScript, there's better ways of managing your asynchronous data. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin. Today on Demos with Angular, we're taking a deep dive into promises as part two of our asynchronous data on the web series. I want to show you how to create promises, how to consume promises, and some of the ways that make your lives easier as a developer. The first thing I want to show you is how to use a promise. So uh, an example of a promise that exists in the browser natively is a method called fetch. Now fetch is going to take in a URL. So we could just make up a URL, something like github.com slash API slash search repositories question mark equals angular. So let's just go ahead and save this file. So this we can see by the type system is going to return a promise. And what that means is we're actually instead of uh, giving it a callback, so a success and a failure callback and telling fetch what to do, uh, fetch is going to give us a promise. And so what that means is this is now a variable that we can hand on hold on to, we can return this from a method, we can hand this around in our program, we can store this, uh, we can do whatever we want this just like a normal object or variable. But then later in our application, at some point that's appropriate to us, we can then later define the callbacks that happen when this promise succeeds uh, or fails. Uh, we call this the then or catch methods. And so what we can do is we can say promise.then. And this is a method that we're going to take, we're going to get out the results from the promise of whatever happened. So in the case of fetch, you're going to get an HTTP response. Uh, and so what we can do is we can actually do something with that result with the successful API request. And then we can also define separately a catch method. And that will then take an error. And then we can decide what to do, do something with the error. So the first difference that we notice between this and callbacks is that uh, in a callback, you have to define it all up front. All those methods have to be known to you. Whereas with promises, you define them uh, as a method on the promise that then the promise knows how to execute as soon as they're defined or as soon as the result comes back. So to see one of the other really nice features of promises, I'm going to use this fetch call that I made, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to actually define a chain of promises here. And so let's imagine I wanted to first query from uh, the GitHub URL, and then I wanted to use that data to query from another API. So let's just go ahead and clear this out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say fetch dot then and I'm going to pass it in the results into another method. And what we can do in the then so this is effectively the uh, what we do if this is uh, fetch has been successful is I can actually return another promise. And so maybe this is uh, URL number two. And what will happen is this promise will be defined as soon as this first fetch was successful. And then what we can do is we can continue to chain these kind of as deeply as we want. So we can just keep saying then result equals return fetch URL number three. And if, if we want to make this clear, you can actually, uh, if you get rid of the brackets, JavaScript will automatically return the results. And so you can see we can just do this very, very nice nesting, where I've now tried to fetch a URL. And if I was successful at fetching that URL, then it's going to try and fetch a URL number two. And if that was successful, it's going to fetch URL number three. And again, we can save the entire result of this as a promise. So the promise here at the end, we can define the callback for what happens if all three of these succeed, each happening sequentially, each happening asynchronously. And what's very nice about this catch that we defined at the bottom here is that this catch will catch an error across any of these asynchronous events. So if the first request fails, it will end up here. If the second request fails, we'll end up here, uh, or if the third request. So if any of these requests fail, we end up in the catch because we're catching any asynchronous failure here. So if we tried contrasting this with a callback, the, the big two differences are first, we would have to do kind of nested chaining, right? So if I had like, and we took in a URL, and then we had a success callback and a failure callback, this would then have to have a success callback or a, a success defined. So we could do that in line. And then you'd have that success take in an object. And then we'd maybe have to get another URL, which would be 
URL2. And that would have another success callback. And then we would say get URL3. And that would take URL3. And that would take success callback. And then we could have all of these events take in the same failure. But you, you can see how the nesting and the chaining actually gets much more complicated here. The other benefit is that if you look at the fact that we're actually defining some of these events after the fact, right? So we can have a method that just defines how do you go fetch the data, and then I can have the definition of what to do with that data in a different part of my program. Whereas in callback land, we'd have to be passing those successes and failures all throughout the application. And so callbacks are actually really going out of style for many different APIs now. All right, so now we've taken a bit of a look at using promises that exist in the browser using APIs like fetch. Uh, but I want to show you how to compose different asynchronous events that can happen in the browser and define your own promise. So let's create a new function, maybe called get my data. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new promise. And we're going to just return that so that our API is returning a promise. And the key to a promise is that you're going to take in what's called an executor, um, which is basically two methods. So it's going to be a resolve and a reject. And what's going to happen is uh, I can do any sort of asynchronous events that I want. Um, but as long as I call resolve when my promise has successfully completed, or I call reject when my promise has failed, then anyone that is using my promise will have their then or catch methods called. So here I could do something very simple, like I could just wrap a fetch method. So let's maybe fetch a URL, and I could say dot then uh, result is going to re uh, resolve with that result. I could say dot then error is going to reject with the error. So what I've done here is I've taken a asynchronous event that you can do in the promise, or that you can do in the browser, and I have wrapped it in my own promise that then I can actually do additional things with. So for example, in my then method here, I could do any sort of extra program I want. So I could add some additional console logs, URL failed, I could do something a little bit more complex. So I could do something like oh, that was actually a success, so I could do something like URL succeed success. Or I could do something more complex, like imagine if this error uh, if if the first URL failed, I could actually then say, hey, then instead, maybe we go fetch URL two. So what I'm def doing here is, if the first fetch fails, then I'm defining another fetch. And if that second fetch succeeds, then we can say our whole our get my data succeeded. Or we can say, uh, hey, there was an error, and we're going to reject with the error. And so what's what's really cool about this is I'm now combining multiple sources of asynchronous data, and I'm defining how it is going to work, I'm going to define any sort of chain of events that I want to happen to handle that data. But to users of my API, if someone wants to actually consume the get my data API, they know exactly what they're going to get, right? They can say get my data. And that is a promise. And then they know that they can do promise to dot then. And do whatever they want with it. And they can do promise to dot catch. So it's, it's providing a really beautiful abstraction layer where I can combine any amount of asynchronous events or programming or user interaction that I want. And then as soon as I recall that resolve or reject, then the promise is going to handle the interaction and the resolution of that promise with the then and catch methods. Now that we've taken a first look at some of the ways that you can use promises to manage asynchronous data and really move the control of what happens when asynchronous data is resolved, to a different part of your application, check out the next part in the series on observables.